If you clicked on this video, you're probably looking for an answer to the question that everybody's asking, at least everybody inside of crypto. Is Bitcoin going to the moon now? Or are we going to have to wait? It really is a flip of the coin. Hello there, my friends, and welcome back to another episode of TA with Um K. My name is McKay. In today's episode, we're going to get back to our roots. We're going to start doing this at least once every Saturday or Sunday, getting a video out where I give you guys just a general market update as I see it through these MK eyes. We're going to look at the DXY. We're going to look at the S&P 500 and, of course, Bitcoin's chart and just give you some analysis on what I'm seeing there. As always, if you're enjoying these videos, please remember to like and subscribe and let's go. Okay, dokie, we're not going to spend too much time on any one of these charts. Just want to give you a quick update on what I'm seeing. Now, this is the DXY weekly chart. For those of you that are new to the DXY, all this is is the US dollar index. It just represents the strength of the US dollar versus a basket of the other major currencies, things like the euro, the yen, and so forth. Now, as is the case with most charts, we look at these for things that are somewhat of a consistency. And then, of course, there's always going to be outliers. The one thing that's mostly consistent with this chart is that when it's going down, stocks and crypto are going up. And when it's going up, they're going down. You can see here dating back to 2016 through 2018 that the uh, DXY was in a falling wedge. It broke out in 2018, which was when crypto saw its blow off top. And then of course you had the long bear market again around uh, you know, COVID times of 2020 that found a top here at this blue zone. And then it started another falling wedge. We saw another bull market. It broke out in April of 2021, which was the first blow off top of the last bull market. Now the one outlier between these two yellow lines is that the DXY was trending up. Bitcoin was able to recover. If you remember right, last bull run, it saw another peak. Uh, but ultimately, as this trended up, that found its blow off top and we saw another bear market. And then, of course, again, another falling wedge that began kind of in October, September, October of 2022. And that's kind of when we saw crypto start to recover. And then, of course, we are where we are now. So what looks similar to me based on back here is you kind of saw it break out of the wedge. It, it ultimately did a double bottom. You know, and eventually broke above that and started the bear market. Now, are we trying to do the same thing? This is somewhat of a double bottom. It's actually a higher low. Now, do I think that we're necessarily going into the bear market already? Uh, no, I do not. And I'll explain more of that in some of my upcoming videos. But what it, what is cause for concern is the fact that the DXY does look like it wants to push higher. And ultimately for the bull run to take on its next leg, I think we're gonna need to find some major resistance. Question is, does that happen here? Do we get a double top and maybe this pulls back down here, giving us at least short-term rally? And then we can kind of see what price does or what the DXY does when it gets to here. Uh, I think ultimately the FOMC meetings coming up in March and April will go a long ways to determine that. Uh, this meeting that we just had at the beginning of this month, they didn't raise the rates, but they also didn't lower them. There's rumors that in June or July, they may do their first rate decrease, which I think would make a big difference. Um, I'm of the belief it'll probably happen if it does towards the end of the year, ultimately meaning that our rally could begin going into the elections you know, that happened at the end of the year here in the United States. But anyhow, in the meantime, what we're watching for on the DXY is either a breakout, which would be bad for crypto, probably see Bitcoin go to some lower prices, we'll discuss when we get to that chart, or ultimately do we at least get a short-term rally back up to like maybe 70K while the DXY trends back this direction. The next chart we wanna quickly take a peek at is the SPX or the S&P 500. This of course represents the traditional stock market, which Bitcoin will deviate from time to time, but overall, typically if this is going up, Bitcoin follows because after all, it is just a stock, right? And uh, now that we're getting the ETS and things like that, we're getting a lot of the bigger money people in it, which just means it's even more and more likely to follow this chart. Now I have removed them from the chart since, but those of you that watched my videos from like six months, a year ago or so, you'll remember that we used to have a measured move on here that was the measured move of the breakout of this falling wedge. So what we did is we took the the length of the wedge and then put this at the point of the breakout and the measured move was just back up here basically around the top so we discussed that for quite some time but you can see that it took quite some time to actually play out there were some moves along the way and what we'd be tracking now as far as maybe a new measured move would be this cup and handle let me clear this up real quick and explain so we'll go ahead and grab this drawing tool again so the cup would actually begin right here 
And then here was actually the handle. This is just a technical pattern. And of course, this is considered the neckline of the cup and handle, this area being the breakout. And the measured move for that is just taking the bottom of the cup up to that neckline and then dragging that up to the point of the breakout. And that would actually give us a measured move at my yellow line up here at right around 55.25, you know, give or take obviously a few dollars. And we haven't reached that measured move yet. The question is, are we going to see a pullback in the near future, which we'll zoom in in just a second and explain some ideas for that, that maybe see us test back down here, or maybe even a little bit lower back down here to the actual neckline of that pattern. This here would of course just be a retest of that previous all time high before the bear market. Or do we see a break to the upside and maybe this coincides with a pullback on the DXY and we get that measured move sooner than later. So now we're zoomed in on the four hour chart and there's just a couple ideas I wanna quickly go over. So for me to be bullish, I would really need to see the, the SPX break clear back up here above this area here, which is where it saw resistance actually on three different occasions. And that would be right around 52, like 65. If we flip that as support, then yes, the likelihood of us going up to that yellow measured move that we discussed uh, a few minutes ago, uh, is very, very high. However, if you look over here, we're in basically what's called a rising channel, which is a bearish pattern by nature. It means it has a higher percentage likelihood of breaking to the downside. It's also somewhat of a bear flag. Um, not a perfect bear flag, but you can see this would be the pole. And of course, this would be the flag. And the way you get the measured move for that is you take this uh, trend line and make it as the pole. And then at whatever point it ends up breaking to the downside. So let's just say that it comes back down here and ultimately breaks down here somewhere. We could drag this tool over here and give us a measured move at that point, which would likely be back down here at these levels of support that it previously tested somewhere anywhere between like 4,700 and maybe like 4,750. So for now, that would kind of be my plan A, plan B for the S&P 500. I think at the time, at the time of making this video, we're kind of just in a no man's land where I wouldn't feel comfortable making any major trades. And last but not least, we're going to quickly go over the Bitcoin chart. This is the daily time frame. Now I do believe we're at a point in time that ultimately this chart's going to do what it's told. As far as the other two charts we just discussed, I think that the DXY ultimately will set in motion what the S&P 500 does, which will ultimately set into motion what Bitcoin does. However, if you're one of those people that maybe only look at the Bitcoin chart, this is what I'm keeping an eye on. It was in its own falling wedge that it recently broke out of and is attempting to retest. However, there wasn't much volume that came in, so it's very high likelihood that it's actually just a fake out rather than a breakout. But until that actually happens, we have to respect the breakout. Now the measured move before that actually would just see price action go back up to right around the previous all time high, which is right around $73,000. Now, if you're like me and you're just looking for that next kind of big opportunity to trade either Bitcoin or if you're like me, I trade altcoins. And I really just don't want any part of this move even if it happens. For me to be bullish, especially midterm and get back into the market as far as DCAing back more into the coins I already hold, I wanna see a break back above 73. We've already been rejected there twice. Uh, I think there's a high likelihood if we go up there again that we will break out, but I wanna wait and see that actually happen before buying more coins or even better yet. So zooming back out to the daily chart, we can use this fib retracement tool and drag it from the bottom of this last pullback that was down here up to this most recent peak of just over 73,000. And we can see some areas of interest, at least from a fib perspective. And we can see the 0.5 was where this last big bounce at the bottom of the wedge happened, which was just around $56,000. I think that if we retest that area again, it could be an area to at least put a little bit of cash into some of the coins that you're holding. However, what I would like to see is a little bit deeper retrace back down here to the golden pocket, which is between about 51,000 and uh, 52,100. That would be a good area to me. And then a full on like best opportunity if we see an extended pullback over the next month or two would be anything back around like between 46 and 50K. Again, all that being said, to end this video, my final thoughts are that we're definitely in what I would consider kind of a wait and see mode. Uh, if you're like me and you already have some cash in the market, um, some investments that you're holding, I wouldn't necessarily scare yourself out of those. Even if we see an extended pullback, I would just look at that as a buy the dip opportunity opportunity. Um, but otherwise, we're looking for either that to happen, or of course, in my opinion, ultimately a break above the 73k before the next launch off. Thank you so much for sticking around at the end of the video. As always, I appreciate you guys. Feel free to leave me a comment, question, suggestion, any of that sort of stuff. I look forward to seeing those. And again, as always, if you haven't already and you're enjoying my content on the way out, please remember to like and subscribe. We'll catch you in the next one. It's T -A -A.